Hey, everyone. So there's big news. Uh, I'm sure everyone has heard by now. Donald Trump has been elected the 47th president of the United States, making him probably the greatest political comeback story in all of American history. Uh, when you look at what this man has been through for the, from the past year, just as an observer, uh, watching the good, the bad, and the ugly, everything going his way from a, an attempted assassination, two attempted assassination attempts, one that actually nicked him in the ear, uh, almost killed him on live television to the iconic photos that have come from this man over the past year. It, it's It's been a wild ride for the country just observing what's going on. But yet last night, uh, not only in the Electoral College, but it seems also in the popular vote as well, Donald Trump has been elected, and uh, and here we are, America. This is this is what we are. This is what we're doing going forward. And a, about a month ago, at this point, uh, we did a video here that said what he just did, what Trump just did at that moment one month ago, may have been what is going to bring him victory. And now, looking back and in hindsight, it looks like uh, looks like it was a pretty good call. And, and so that was on October seventh, marking the one year anniversary of the horrific October 7th attacks in Israel. Donald Trump, along with an entourage of uh, Jewish leaders, went to the resting place of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And he prayed over there, and um, we went through exactly what he was doing. And um, it, this is actually what that looked like. And so what was going on over here is Donald Trump is uh, reciting a prayer, the, the prayers that he was uh, requesting, and uh, the going to the resting place of a righteous person, like going to any holy spot in Judaism, is like going to a, a cleaned pipeline, to, right, directly to God. We all have direct pipelines to God. We all have direct access to God, being that every human being is created in the image of God. But sometimes that pipeline through our deeds can get a little bit clogged, a little bit uh, stuffed up. And uh, going to a holy site, either the, the resting place of the righteous or a holy place like the Western Wall in Jerusalem, that, that, is a, that is a place that has a clear pipeline in order for us to be able to have a direct, easy access connection. Very special place and special moment where prayers are received in a very special way. Um, the resting place of the Lubavitcher Rebbe is somewhere that people from all faith backgrounds, all religious traditions, all re levels of religious observance have come for inspiration, for meditation, and for connection. And there's story after story after story that has been told over the years of the blessings that have come from it. And the tradition that you saw, that you saw just a few moments ago, Donald Trump uh, reading his request on a paper and then ripping it up and placing it into the the grave area. It's it's similar to the idea of when a person goes to the Western Wall and writes down different prayer requests and then sticks it inside the wall, uh, hoping that they're in anticipation that their prayers will be uh, ascend in a in a clean and easy way uh, on high. And so you see Donald Trump participating over here, and we said about a month ago that perhaps this could be uh, that perhaps this could be the moment uh, that uh, that 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 the election was that the election was founded that it was called. We were the only ones to to to, to guess on such a thing. This was something that last night in in the tabulation of all the votes, as everything was coming in, uh, as things were looking very good, uh, Ben Shapiro actually. Um, actually mentioned as well. He, he may have been saying it a little bit in jest, but um, the, the, the point rings true nonetheless. Take a look at it, what it looked like last night. The main point of this election is when Donald Trump and I stood by the grave of <laughs> and there's a picture of me and Donald Trump making prayers Where you know, at the grave of yeah. Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. That's the moment when this election was decided. <laughs> and, and that very well could have been. Uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe's resting place has been a place of inspiration and meditation, as we mentioned. But even the Rebbe himself, during his lifetime, during his physical time in this world, would go to the resting place of his father-in-law, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, who not only was his father-in-law, but also his Rebbe and mentor, and he would pray at his graveside. But there's another interesting piece to mention in this story. So the Jewish people throughout the throughout the year 
divide the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, which is the law that God gave to the Jewish people at Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus. So this, these five books of Moses are divided up to be read uh, a, a few chapters uh, per week and, and over the course of the year are, are read in full. So in other words, all the Jewish communities around the world, whether you're living in China, South Africa, or the United States, are all reading the same portion of the Torah on any given week. So no matter where you go, it's always the same Torah portion. Now, what's interesting is the Torah portion for this particular week. There's a verse in there that I hear constantly from my Christian brothers and sisters regarding uh, why they support the Jewish people and the land of Israel. I've asked many Christians why they have such devotion supporting Israel and supporting the Jewish people as a whole. And there's a verse from this week's Torah portion that really is always uttered. It's Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. God tells Abraham, I will bless those that bless you, and those that curse you, I will curse. And many of my Christian brothers and sisters will always say, I bless the Jewish people so that I can be blessed. Because I know that if I bless them, the Bible tells me that I too will be blessed. And it's very interesting that Jews the worldwide this week are reading Parshas Lech Lecha, which in that in in this week's Torah portion is the verse that says, "I will bless those that bless you." And so Donald Trump, whether you love him or hate him as a person, has been as a president the most pro-Israel, the most philo-Semitic president probably in American history. And I don't think that it's even close. A manifestation of this particular blessing that I will bless those that bless you. And uh, he has been awarded the, the presidency. At the end of every election, I always hope that the American people will come together, will uh, come together and celebrate that which unites us, no matter who it is. And at the end of the day, as the, it says in the book of Proverbs, that the heart of the king is in the hand of Hashem, in the hand of God. And so no matter who wins an election, really it's God that motivates, that stirs the leader's heart in order for the guidance of the nation. And as the great King Solomon also said, this too shall pass. So whether you're rejoicing today because of the, uh, the, of the amazing news or whether you're down in the dumps because of the terrible news, this too shall pass. So seize the moment, come together and make this country the blessing that it's meant to be.